Hello and welcome to Bean Pod, our writing and entertainment podcast. I'm Liam. I'm Natalie. And I'm Kirsty. And today we're going to be discussing Dracula and vampires in general. Uh, Dracula is the most famous vampire, so we will start with him, then we'll move through his films and on to some other vampires, and then we'll go into some of the literature uh, that Natalie and Kirsty have written, and then we've got our regular pieces of the five minute faff the bean story and the bean challenge at the end which is apparently going to be horrible today so (laughs) yeah yep so to start we're gonna go on to the uh, original dracula which was bram stoker's dracula the novel which was published in 1897 and it's still well still as popular as ever i suppose Mm -hmm. Mm kirsty's been reading it the last couple of weeks i started rereading it this week yeah, yeah i've actually completed it um i, I actually now own two i've known two copies of it and a ebook now because my original copy was in such tiny print i had to buy a cheap it's paperback to read though. it i can't wait for you to read it a second time and find the hilarity and everything that happens i found a fair bit of hilarity the first time around. it is funny yeah. <laughs> so with with the um with the novel you're saying about the humor of it yeah. is it sort of well, well should, does it translate it, well, basically? Well, maybe, should, should we just start by saying what actually, without spoilers? Yeah, without spoilers. What, what actually is the, the plot synopsis? Plot. Yeah, so basically, a guy uh, who is a solicitor is asked to go over to Transylvania to visit with Count Vlad Dracula about a property in England. Yes, he wants to buy property yes. in England and yes. basically find out all the information he can about England because he wants to, you know, move. <laughs> Yeah. And uh, do it properly. Yes, and basically it's in his travels to England that loads of weird things start happening. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, and when he arrives in England, there's a cast of characters yeah. that yes. appear and somehow bla- bizarrely all know each other. Yes. In a slightly convoluted fashion. Mm-hmm. And effectively, I'm pretty sure everybody knows Count Dracula as a vampire. We're not going to have to shout spoiler alert for that one. No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, effectively, yes, they're effectively finding out all they can about Dracula, mm-hmm. uh, compiling diaries that everybody is keeping yeah. in order yeah, to. It's all, all in a journal format. There's no narrator. The mm-hmm. narrator is, is if, the effectively writer, at the end of, the... of towards the end of the book. They create this manuscript of all their journals, mm-hmm. and that's what you're supposedly yeah. reading, mm-hmm. uh, which is quite a good way of writing things. Yeah, you've made enough of them keep journals that you mm-hmm. get most of the key information. Yeah. But as you have found out, that you get a little bit irritated by the lack of detail at times. Yes, some of the detail is incredibly rich, and then there's other things like the layout of Castle Dracula. Yes, but you have is to remember that, that the reason he forgets to tell you the layout of the castle is because he's going mad for yes. a moment. He tells you absolutely everything else about the castle except the actual layout. Yes. He just sort of then starts announcing things, and about it's like that's where. He's, he's, ha- he's having a brief moment of madness. Can you really? <laughs> you have to forgive him a bit for that. I'm pretty sure it starts before he starts going nuts. That's the oh, thing. Okay. It annoys me slightly, but although you do like details, so um, I do. You would get annoyed by that. Yes, although some of the diary keepers are much more into detail than others. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, That's how you get the characters. Yes, and there's the very sassy Mina in it mm, who uh, presents Dr. Van Helsing with her diary in shorthand, yeah. and he can't read shorthand yeah. <laughs> <laughs> before taking pity on him and then presenting him with the typewritten version, yeah. which is <laughs> I just think fabulous. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that is so kicked up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, because she's the she was the character that was translated into um, League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. Yes. Rather than Van Helsing, they used her. Although the film isn't well, it's okay, but um, in the comic book, she I think it translates quite well. Her character, she's quite sassy in it as well. Um, so you were saying about the humour of the book. Uh, it's only so. the humor only comes about though when it, you know what's going on because the first time it's your initial reading of it is quite dry. Yeah, you, you because take it's everything at face value. But the second time it's like I'm finding out now on my reread is that you get like some of the things that Dracula does. They just seem hilarious. Like he dresses up. He, he, he like he pretends to be he, well. He dresses up as the coach driver. He puts on a beard and everything. And then he leaves jo- Jonathan on the just doorstep, him just abandons him to, to put away the horses and stuff. Then suddenly he turns up in normal clothing, without the beard or anything, just normal clothing, and he opens up and goes, Welcome to Castle Dracula! Like, you, you just 
play fancy dress. <laughs> <laughs> this is where I'm pretty sure Van Helsing's ass- uh, assessment of child brain comes yeah. from. <laughs> yeah. certain childishness yeah, about like him. The, the bit I just got to, um, he's, he's just like, um, Jonathan cuts himself while shaving and because he can't see Dracula in his mirror, so it, it sort of surprises him when he turns up. And Dracula goes, we'll get rid of the culprit of that cut. Let me just chuck that mirror out the window for you. It's like, oh, it's all about what? Man, man's vanity. <laughs> it's like, well, what did you do that for? He has this fantastic spiel about how it's, you know, the, uh, all, like, the root of vanity and evil and yeah. men. And it's like, yeah. but I just want to shave. Yeah. <laughs> the thing is, that all comes across as really dry the first does, time you read it. Because I've read the time, beginning twice. Yeah. I got sort of two... Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know about less than a third of the way in, and just it was it got so dry, and then I read yeah. it again and yeah. got through it. That Definitely time. better second time round. Yes. So how how <laughs> what sort of other things did that do, Krusty, since you um, actually read it? <laughs> most recently, yes. Yeah. Uh, I quite like. Um, it's actually quite an interesting watch, watching them travel around yeah. and how how they work that out. Mm-hmm. It's quite realistic in a yeah. bizarre manner considering they're hunting vampires mm-hmm. through most of the film well, actually the other thing i always find interesting with uh, with the book is how many different things uh, dracula can transform into so he's got he can be a bat he can be a wolf or like wolf dog. dog yeah he can uh, turn into a mist yes he can do mist um is there anything else oh, that's kind of handy yeah really. yeah he can change his size. The other thing and about it, the vampires it, it, going through the tiniest holes yes, because they can adjust their yes. size faster and there's, than. There's also is, is there something? Is it just speculation, or can he manipulate the weather? There's something about weather. Yes, he can control the weather yes. because he's got like the immediate weather around him. Yes. he's got control of. Mm-hmm. Um, that's how the yeah. ships get to where they need to get. Yes, because he just kind of goes, "Here we go. Yeah, <laughs> Have some wind in the right this. direction." <laughs> Yeah. Just how he yeah. gets a completely unmanned ship to wash up in Whitby. That, actually, these are all the things that actually get forgotten a lot in the remaking of any sort of vampire. Yes, they've... Story, they've even the Draculas. He's, they quite specific, he's, he's really quite specific, yeah. Bram Stoker is, mm-hmm. in his in his vampire myth. Yeah. He's quite specific in he it. He is. He knows exactly how a vampire works. A lot of it works. has been altered since... Mm-hmm. Yeah, a lot. Because it, it's not necessarily all of it even dovetailing with the with the myths. No, it, it's he's got his own set of mythology, as mm-hmm. every vampire since has got its own set of mythology. Because yeah. um, it's like a staple in every vampire story since. To right, these are what the rules are. This is what yeah. we can do. This is what we can't do. This is just ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, that <laughs> is basically really basically you take what you think it could be possible. And you chuck whatever seems ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. But is that not what gave him sort of the, the book itself has got this law and things like that? Do you think that chopping it from the book uh, in these films, like some of those I didn't actually know, like the whole the mist thing mm-hmm. um, and the being able to control weather. I didn't fully know that. No. So it's quite hard to visualise, I would yes. imagine, uh, in a film. Particularly in older films, it's going to be very hard to visualise. Because yeah, it's not like he stands there like like a magician who goes, clouds, come over me! Or something. It it, just, it's it's, just, it's it quite just subtle. Happens. Yeah. Because also the other thing is it's it's called Dracula, but you never really get Dracula's perspective. No, you don't. You get the conversations that he has with mm-hmm. Jonathan Harker at the beginning, and it's. Yeah. It's very unlike a modern book in the fact in a modern book, if it's the title character, you're going to be following the character. Yes. Whereas this one is, it's everybody else. You're following their... He what, really features them. relatively little in what's yeah. immediately happening on the page. But that, that, you just find that, out that, about what he's been doing. He, he is an unknown. He's being there's, hunted. There's something weird about him that no one can completely understand. And mm. it's not until Van Helsing comes along and goes, oh, I know what this is. You're like, uh, what? <laughs> It's a what? It's a what? <laughs> <laughs> and he has to sort of convince them one at a time yeah. that you know this is this is why Jonathan Harker is completely mad because rationally rationally he can't justify yeah. it. It takes somebody to tell him what you saw is real for him to kind of go, oh thank goodness for yeah, that, right? Like, I can be I me again. <laughs> it's like yeah. I can stop being insane now because yeah. I, you know, it's a, looks. It's one of the things they didn't do very well in the films. It made Jonathan Harker look particularly pathetic yes, but he's because not, it, did, he's just... it didn't convey as well yeah. as it does in the books that he is just doubting everything mm-hmm. which is why he's gone insane and it takes yeah. somebody to walk up to him and kind of go no what you saw actually happened it was real believe yeah. your senses and he kind of goes 
oh, thank goodness for that. Right, I'm the man I was, you know. Yeah. I'm yeah. ten times the man I was five minutes ago. Fantastic. Yeah. He, he just thinks he's he's seeing things and he's, yeah, he doesn't, but, yeah. Yeah, he's cl- he clinging he desperately yeah. to his sanity at that point. Yeah, and he, it's one of those things where he thinks, well, if I tell if I tell my fiancé and things like that, what what's he going to think? What's my friends? And everyone, he's having a sort of yeah. philosophical yeah. breakdown mm. in, in trying to... Yeah, it's rationalize not until, everything. So I tell his fiance, he goes, no, 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 no. I, I get it, I get it, I got, I know what you, what's going on now. He's like, oh, thank goodness for that. Yes, yeah, so it, it takes his fiance. It, well, she's his wife by that point, isn't she? Uh, yes, yeah, so she's like his that wife point. by that point, and Van and Doctor Van Helsing to turn up. I'm gonna go, no, nope, no, nope, you're right. Yeah. We get it. We yeah. believe you. And it's yeah. like, oh, awesome. Thanks for that. Yeah. <laughs> Effectively. Yeah. But oh, other character you can't forget. The weirdest, creepiest, but Renfield? most awesome is Renfield. I know oh you love God, Renfield. Renfield. I, I don't know why I like him so much, but he, there's just something. He's he's, just, he's a brilliant barometer for it. He is, yeah. It's, and, and he's just so insane. Well, he is insane, but he's just he, he's a lunatic. Yes, he is. But the the he just somehow attaches himself to Dracula, and Dracula goes like, "Yeah." I'm not I'm, quite sure how Dracula manages to influence no. him while he's still on the other side of the continent. No, I don't. Because know. Because that starts while he's on the other side of the continent. Yeah. It's it's quite odd. I don't know what's going on with that. But yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. It's like you said, you didn't know about the controlling no. the weather and things like that. Everything we know is what Van Helsing is what we've seen and what Van Helsing has told us. Mm. But there must be things he doesn't know. Which and there, is why, there are like, surely like things that he gets wrong. The whole childlike brain. I was like, well, it doesn't really he doesn't have a childlike brain. <laughs> he, he, yes, because um, Van Van Helsing is basically saying he's he's not really not that not that clever. At which point, every everything else you've seen about yes. him is like he's pretty high functioning. Yes. You know, Frankly, he's he's, he's very tired. old. Yeah, he's survived for a very long time. Mm-hmm. He's actually pretty good. Yes. <laughs> I think you might be slightly underestimating mm-hmm. him here, because at one point he's he's giving him you know dues for all this you know massive plan that he's launched and getting yeah. himself across the continent, and having a backup plan and how to get out, and it's like, but he's still at Ness and still working as a child, and we can outwit him, and it's like, no, really? <laughs> <laughs> you're being very um, hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so you're being very uh, I think you're under- underestimating your enemy here, proof yes. by the fact that he manages to skip them entirely. Yeah, uh, you know, you should never underestimate the enemy. No, overestimate them, yes. for goodness sake. <laughs> you know, drive them into the ground ten times over if you can. <laughs> yes. Over-engineer, over-engineer, and over-engineer everything. Yes. Whether it's a building or a plan, do it. <laughs> yes, because actually, the way, the way it ends, I, I'm not sure if I, how well I remember it, because it, it sort of ends... It's very abrupt. It is, very sudden. It's like, they, it's like they're in the, appro- they're in the approach to, to get, Castle he's Dracula. He's trying to get back to Castle Dracula... The gypsies are riding up with him yeah. in a cart, yeah. and they basically ambush the gypsies, see off the gypsies, and kill him. Yeah. And it's like, well, it's like, that's quite. Um, yeah, I don't think he'd allow things to get that. But far. they've already, they've already basically, you know, salted the earth against him, so he can't yeah, get back to the castle anyway. And it's mm-hmm. like, well, it's a fairly terrible plan here by Dracula. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. Maybe he wasn't that intelligent. Well, oh, no, because it, it's a, it's a good plan. In he, certain ways, but there's like better that ways. So many centuries, he knows how to travel. But he also knows that you can catch a train and do it in, you know, three days. Yeah. So why would you still take a ship when the water is a massive issue for him? Yeah. Because of tides and running water is a big problem yeah. for him. You know, he had massive trouble getting there. Why would he not get himself shipped? Yeah. You know, make them think he's taken the boat and then get himself shipped yeah, by train exactly. and then you'll be there in, you know, half the time. Yeah, he'll, he'll already be home. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just, just, just stood there just waiting for him. Yeah, like, are you waiting going to come and get me? Or, you like, know, he's, he's, the, he's the kind of man that, given the state of everything else, I would not put it past him to no. have decoys. No. You know. Especially he knows they're onto him. Yes. You know, I, I can genuinely say, you know, for the way we're basically ignoring yeah. the ending. Yeah. Um, genuinely think that he would decoy them in having that crate that they're following mm-hmm. him not actually be in it yeah him vachette himself somewhere else mm-hmm. and he's already there waiting for yeah. them and that he could pick them all off quite easily that yeah. way and it's like why would he follow this ridiculous plan to get himself yeah. back yes he's written himself he, he he's planned this escape route since before he arrived yeah surely he'd have put some more thought into it mm-hmm. than this you know it would there are better plans yeah. It's like this is a long-standing plan. Mm. You know, some of his stuff is incredibly 
complex and yeah. well, most of his stuff is incredibly complex but some of it's just slightly absurd at the same time yeah. but I, why, I why think in a that? way I think it is Bram, for Bram Stoker because he, he was writing about a creature that people found Dracula quite horrifying when they first came across it and so maybe it, it was almost Bram Stoker's way of going actually yes he's horrifying he's a monster but it's okay we, we, can, we can survive it we can we'll survive. beat him yes we'll beat him in Whereas, rational scientific yes. Yes. Ways. I'm trying to say that no, humans will prevail. We'll be fine. It's but... Because he's tr- he's trying to pick up yeah. the myths and the legends from yes. what for England at the time would have been backwards country. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. Whereas actually, because the but vampire wasn't by, really popular. If you go culture, by the characters themselves, yes, it doesn't quite follow. <laughs> no. But I think that that's probably why so many more vampire stories have come from it because, and, and especially when people picked <laughs> up Dracula and said, "Well, he has survived." Uh, yes, because it would be quite easy to rewrite that, that ending and make yeah. him survive. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I think Dracula, you really think of the original because in Western culture at the time, vampires weren't really prominent no. as a thing in the psyche. No, they were just a scary story. That it wasn't even a scary story. Mm. It hadn't really been imported very yeah, well. We'd, so... we'd sort of got past it. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> So Dracula in popular culture is still quite high. Um, there's a small segment in one of the Blade films, I think, uh, is possibly the third one where he turns up and he's walking around the shop with all Dracula memorabilia, uh, which I thought was one of the better parts of the film. Yeah. Um, but in terms of movie versions, you've got uh, the very first one, I think 1929, Nosferatu. Mm. Which, which they attempted to make as a Dracula and then failed to get the rights to it. So <laughs> uh, quickly renamed it Nosferatu. <laughs> and then you've got your uh, your Bela Lugosi yeah, Dracula and your Hammer Lee. Horrors, Christopher Lee, who sort of made it his own. Yeah. I mean, when you look at the old Hammer Horror, horror oh, films. Oh, have you ever tried watching the... Which one was it? Who's the Bela Lugosi? The ghosty one, I think they have. I'm not, I'm not sure. Seen there's, I, I only saw a bit of it. I couldn't. I couldn't take it because it was just too funny. But they have. You can actually see they got bats flying around, and you can actually see the strings. strings. Yeah. <laughs> God, like... And yet somehow it's stuck in culture, yeah, despite know. being absolutely cheesy as anything. Uh, yes. Uh... And then. Well, Kirsty's going through a book at the moment uh, of various Dracula vampire culture. Uh, vampire <laughs> yeah, culture. I have, it goes through. I have a book that has all the all the different film versions in it, so I'm using yeah. it as reference at this yeah. point. Yeah, so um, you've, you've there are comedy variety. versions as well. For yeah. example, oh, uh, Dracula dead that. and loving yes, it. Yes, dead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, fantastic. With Leslie Nielsen. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and then you got Gary Oldman's Dracula. Yeah, yeah which Bram Stoker's is, Dracula. Which Bram Stoker's, is yeah. yeah, he's very yeah. Uh, it's it's probably the one that most people bring mm-hmm. to mind yeah. when you think of the film version or certainly mm-hmm. a modern one. Yeah. Um, I like, I like the Mark time. Warren one as well. Yeah. That's done very well. It's, it's the, the uh, Gary Oldman one is surprisingly good and surprisingly close to the book mm-hmm. apart from the whole weird romancy bit that Dracula's yeah. got going on that they've added in for yeah. no apparent reason. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's Hollywood they're going to. Yeah. They, yeah. they need to unfortunately. <laughs> yes. That's Whereas the, the Mark Warren one they, they do stray a bit from the book but they don't stray from the whole but they don't stray from the plot, so they just change some of the book ideas. Because it's a relatively long book yeah, to but, get into. Yeah, a, I know, but ba- ba- the plot is basically the same. Yeah. yeah. It's, uh, yeah, there's, there's a lot there's alarmingly things that are close and things that are yeah. wildly wrong in yes. the in the yes. Gary Oldman version, which is hmm. odd to watch because some of it is almost utterly faithful and others yeah. is just like Excuse me? <laughs> Where did that come from? <laughs> in terms of, oh, sorry. <laughs> and in terms of more recent films, um, last year, I think, it was Dracula Untold. Yes, yes. that's fantastic. As the, the idea of going into oh, the legend of, yes. and trying to make things more realistic, which Hollywood has got her heads that into absolutely lately. absolutely fantastic, Dracula Untold. I love it that. is a good movie. Um, Oh. Some good, nice gore in it, which is really always good. Really gory, yeah. Um, really. See that that surprised me because wasn't it a twelve A or? Is it? I think it? it was a twelve A. Yeah. I thought it was like a fifteen. Yeah, I thought it was uh, like fifteen. It, it, it's one around there, I, I suppose. Yeah. Which is, you know, you're never quite sure what you're going to get in those sorts of films. It's mm. one of those. It's sort of it's 
because it's in such a old old style battle, it's almost fantasy violence enough that they can get away with it a little mm-hmm. bit. But it is still pretty good violence. I mean, when yes. you and I sign we, off on we violence, like we're we like signing off on violence properly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that yeah. was proper nasty at times. <laughs> yeah, but it, it's following the trend that that has come up lately of trying to you know follow yeah. legends and myths back to some sort of realistic mm-hmm. version which yeah. I love that trend actually yeah. I quite well, like it well you're well, a they big always fan say... of origins aren't yeah. you yeah so... and they're, they're trying to take this story and then kind of pick it back and make it make so they, sense they often say that all legends myths and legends are based on truth yes. so that's why they're trying to trace back to where it all came from yeah it's uh... well, that's where you get like Vlad the Impaler it's like yeah, so you go the back most to famous the actual... Vlad out there <laughs> Vlad Tepes or whatever yeah it do you not think though that when they the they try and do these with these monsters, when yeah. they go back to the origins, you sort of lose an element of mystery about them, and it sort of makes them almost less scary? I think it enhances it yeah, because it, it gives it, you another yeah. option of where this might have come from. Yeah, which is what we. It's like well, there's this version, and then there's this version, and then there's that, and you can make up your mind. Mm-hmm. They generally don't make them less scary by doing it. Well, they generally anything, make the it can make it more scary. Because yeah, the origin is generally a, gorier yeah. than the. Or darker. The, the, yeah, the origins are generally it, quite. It follows nasty. into uh, another trend that Hollywood was doing of making their bad guys more relatable and mm. sympathetic, and yeah. uh, this is how they got to be as nasty as they are. Yeah. Uh, trend, which you know, I'm quite for that because it yeah. it creates story a lot of the time. Mm-hmm. I mean, the only reason I question that and go slightly off topic is mm-hmm. with Hannibal. They, you have Hannibal Lecter, you have him in his cell, and he's incredibly creepy yeah. in the first film. Oh, yeah. And then they've got, they went through a few films, Red Dragon and things like that, but then they had Hannibal Rising. Mm-hmm. And to me, oh, he then, yeah, he lost his aura mm-hmm. because of what happened. Yeah. Uh, won't go into it, but what happens, and it's like, okay, so he wasn't such a bad guy after all, but then that sort of detracts mm-hmm. from the other three films because the reason you like him as a character is because he's got such a charm and such a yeah. wit, but he's also horribly dangerous. Yes. I think there's a slight difference uh, between that and the fact that that's one franchise that's carrying on, whereas this is a legend that's been around mm-hmm. for so long that this is it's, it's not world. undermining the other versions because it's mm-hmm. a totally separate option. Mm-hmm. It's you've taken the very base level of it and created something different. Is it? It's almost like I was saying earlier, like the vampires the around the world is almost like the equivalent of dragons around the world. Everywhere in the world, there is a version of a dragon. Everywhere in the world, there's a version of a vampire. Yes. And it's finding the origins of where that legend came from. And the different versions of each legend, you yeah. can you can take a diff- you can take the different legends and create completely different. Mm-hmm. Well, not completely different. The core is still yeah. the same, but then it's a different result at the yeah. end. You know, vampires with different motivations, mm-hmm. vampires that need different things and survive different yeah. things, and you know, there's so much scope in the legend to play with. Yeah, it's fantastic. It is Hence, why there's so many of them yeah, in fiction so now. Many. Yeah. <laughs> so well, you would see that as the reason that Dracula, the myth and the legend of it, has endeared over time from 1897 onwards. You know, we're talking 200 years almost yeah i'd I'd say it it probably it 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 persists because it's overlaid itself over an older myth they've basically put a charismatic face and name to a legend that's been around you know there's all all these these talks about how vampires reflect culture and that kind of Mm -hmm. thing and what whatever generation's version of a vampire reflects what's going on in the world at that point, because a vampire is such a yeah. Uh, I mean, look at all the different versions we've had just in the yeah. last few years. It, it's mean, effectively society's dark side that mm-hmm. it it shows. Yeah, I mean, we've gone from trying to stick to the original Dracula, and then you go on to things like uh, Interview with a Vampire, where they're given it's a monster, but the monster now has a soul. Yeah, and then. You're going on to, I'm not sure. Uh, what. I think there was like Lost Boys, which was a massive uh, yes, Lost Boys. Uh, reflection. That that film's a reflection of what was yeah. going on in society at the time. Yeah. Um, um, we don't want to mention the sparkly ones. We're ignoring the sparkly <laughs> things. They're not vampires. <laughs> yeah. we, we, we are avoiding mentioning them, but we have we have read the books, they, we have seen yes. the films, but we. No. I'm not putting them in a conversation about vampires. No. Because they, they're really not. No. 
So, they have their place in, yeah. in and pop culture. And then the other but... one that I really like is the Darren Shan series. I absolutely yes. love those. And actually, that's where the whole half vampire thing, I was really inspired by that, which you will find out about later. <laughs> yeah, we'll go into that one a bit later. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, you've led that nicely into the next segment. So you've got, as you said, you've got Interview with a Vampire. Um, Marvel Comics got in on um, one of the X-Men villains. I can never remember his name. I think it is Vampiro. Ooh, there is a vampire excellent. one. Um, <laughs> and there's also Blade as yeah. well as yeah. a character. And um, you have un- underworld? Yeah, Underworld, underworld as well. Films, so we'll go through a few of those. <laughs> Especially uh, Interview with a Vampire. Um, yes. It's definitely one of my favourites watching. Um, I'm at the moment halfway through reading it as well. So. <laughs> yes, um, yeah. I've, I've heard the book is quite well done. It is. It's It's absorbing. Mm-hmm. Would you like to explain yes. a bit of it? I say I haven't finished it. I've only started reading. Well, it. Well, that's good. You can't it, spoil it. <laughs> it. It launches in with uh, the vampire reveals what he is to this guy who wanted to interview him, and he's basically sat there in this room, completely and utterly absorbed and slightly too terrified to leave, while he tells his life story. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he goes through all the doubts that he had when he first became a vampire, and this is this is the vampire that is still a monster but a vampire that can still think and feel and has a soul in a detached kind of way. <laughs> uh. So when you come back to the film, which is Brad Pitt, Tom Cruise, yeah. uh, Christian Slater and Kirsten Dunst. Yes, very, very young. Yes, yeah, so very, very young Kirsten Dunst. Um, so far what I've read, it's surprisingly accurate. Yeah. Um, one of your sort of, things the only thing you could think of was that the the hairs were the yes in, 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 the, in the book <laughs> Lasat is described as blonde and lewis is the dark haired one and they've uh, obviously between brad pitt and tom cruise they've got it backwards and that's about the only thing that i'm complaining about so far <laughs> well that's the only thing i mean complain yeah. about it's, it's, yeah. it's I'm not, not too going, bad yeah. i'm not that far in yet kirsten dunst's version of uh of, i've completely forgotten the character's name is claudia no, or whatever child vampire has only just really arrived yeah. where i'm reading out in the book so i haven't gone that far uh, into okay. it hmm. to be able to pick holes yet but because i'm very good at picking holes but so far that's about the only thing that's annoying me they're they're playing it very they played it very well it's lasted the time as well. Mm. Um, yeah, Anne Rice's vampire. I mean, Anne Rice's vampire chronicles are still going on. It should probably be worth mentioning. She's still writing them. <laughs> yeah, I mean, in terms of popular culture, vampires are still up there with your with your zombies and mm-hmm. things like that, and your werewolves. Um, you also had Van Helsing from mm. the other side oh, of just, things. Yes. How did we forget Vampire Diaries? Yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. skipped right. Like you got you got all the TV things of Vampire Diaries, yeah. two the, the True bo- Blood. The books are completely different from the TV series on uh, Vampire Diaries. It, it veers off very quickly from the yes. TV series. But both good. Both good. In fact, I think I actually prefer the TV series unusually. The the books are good until about about six. You get to six and it's a bit like, what the hell is going on? The books on? nosedive, the TV series yeah, kept yeah. going the quite TV well. The TV series kept going, yeah. Yeah, which is unusual. Mm. Yeah. Um, in terms of the, the whole popular culture, and they have, there seems to be a vampire film almost every couple of years. Yeah. I mean, if we go through some of them, uh, like I said, Blade was one of the first mm-hmm. Marvel films in general. Um, they sort of really hit their peak around about the 90s and 2000s mm-hmm. they were they were the big monster mm-hmm. back then yeah they you, were still scary at that yeah, point you had your blade who was the half vampire wandering around hunting other vampires mm-hmm. and then you've also got a similar thing in underworld yes which i know that you enjoy i quite like underworld they're um they are still scary creatures of the night at that point they haven't been over romanticized yet they're you know elegant looking but they're still going to kill you (laughs) you probably don't want to be a human and massively involved in the story (laughs) yes um so was it darren shan yes love it love that series fantastic um the the film they shouldn't have even bothered trying because if you're going to do darren shan you're going to do it properly and it's not like the books are very long just 12 books I think and they're all quite each short. one is very short but they have so much in them it's basically I, I've been meaning to read the the prequel series about the vamp the main vampire character in it but um the, it's basically about a kid who he's fascinated with 
creepy things and spiders and stuff like that. And uh, he gets hold of this dangerous spider, and, which, which he, bites um... his friend. And in order to save his friend's life, he makes a deal with a vampire. Yes, I should probably point out that he stole the spider from the vampire. Yes, he did steal it. <laughs> so which he... is really asking for trouble. Yes. <laughs> But he didn't know he was a vampire at the time. He just... uh, should have still come across as, yeah. you know, do not steal other people's scary yes. spiders from scary so people. So basically, in order to save his friend's life, he makes a deal with this vampire, and then he becomes a half-vampire, which I was completely inspired by. <laughs> but uh, yeah, and basically it's just about how he has to try and integrate into vampire society, whilst at the same time he's like, but I, I, I still feel like a kid I still feel like a human child like I still want to be a kid and it's, he's, he's quite yes. good as a, as a, a way in for the reader isn't yeah. it? he's still half yes. what the reader is he's still half yeah and then you get some really mega plot twists that make your brain explode and at the end I cried <laughs> I haven't got that far yet oh I only got God, through about the, the first feels. six it is mega feels at the end of the book oh yeah but it's absolutely fantastic series it's, it's a completely different take on it and Darren Chan is but it, they call the Darren Chan series or Sark to Freak, but it's actually yes. by Darren Chan. <laughs> his, his main character is yeah. also called. Yes, his main character is Darren called Darren Chan. Chan. He's decided to just create right himself as well, yeah. <laughs> but he, the Darren Chan actually does do a lot of creepy, like the Demon Arta series, that's fantastic as well. The um, other supernatural that. And he's also got the zom- a zombie series, and then, like I said, he's got a prequel on the main vampire character. Prequel series, which I haven't got to do yet, but just sort of yeah. has the origins of that vampire. The supernatural, yeah, as a very, genre, is yes, he is very good big. At it. But he, he he sticks with, even though they're aimed at sort of like teenagers to young adults. The, he does have some more adult books, but even though they're aimed at sort of young teenager, young adult, they are still gory. Like with Demon Arter, there's blood, there's guts. It's all the stuff. It's like, yeah, kids can handle this. Get over it. <laughs> he, he, he realises that kids do like this stuff. <laughs> and you get away with it because you make your main character a teenager and everyone's yes. just kind of like, oh, it must be for teenagers. Yes. <laughs> it's very good. So you touched on it a second ago, Kirsty, the whole mm-hmm. supernatural sort of side of things. Yes. The, your vampires, your zombies, your werewolves, things like that. Do you worry that they're becoming oversaturated and they will lose their edge as we grow older or is it just as a society in general that we're losing our sort of fear of things like this i'm slightly worried because i'm you know writing that kind of thing and i don't want it to be over before i finished writing it Mm -hmm. but (laughs) at the same time it's been around for so long i don't think it'll i don't think they'll ever go away if we oversaturate ourselves with the romanticized versions we'll go back to the creepy monsters that stalk the night they're not going to go away they've been here for too long i think it's an element of the unknown with them as well like we said it's a legend yes they'll just morph into something else legends have this unknown to them it's like being afraid of the dark you you don't you're afraid because you don't know what's there you tell horror stories around campfires it's Mm -hmm. what you do yeah society needs scary Mm -hmm. stories yeah and you need the monster that lurks in the dark yes whatever shape that monster takes i mean that alters but yeah uh but essentially, like you said, it's been so such a long time now, and vampires are still stalking. <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm loath to talk about the sparkly things again, but they they got to the romanticized to the point mm-hmm. of the sparkly things arriving, yes. and I believe the backlash to that has sort of it's happened anyway. Mm-hmm. They're going back to being the more, yeah. you know, that, violent, much, scary. Let's go yeah. back to where, how they so, we can be romantic leads, but we can also yeah. rip your throat out, mm-hmm. <laughs> vampires. So you're looking at your things like. Uh, I don't know if you've seen 30 Days of Night. Um, uh, no, I haven't. Which I know is, what it is. It's a vampire film, uh, and it's very much the more violent side of things. Mm-hmm. It's quite quite brutal in places. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a particular decapitation scene, mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> which yeah. I, even I sort of winced at because it was... I want to see this now. <laughs> yeah. yes. um, it, was, uh, it starred Josh Hartnett, I believe, mm-hmm. and it's based I'm on a comic book. Um, um, which I think Hollywood are sort of going towards now. They're, they're looking at these graphic novels. They've done it mm-hmm. with The Walking Dead and things like that. And they're looking at the monsters. Um, and I suppose you're right in a way that they're, they're not going to go away. We're always going to wonder what's out in the dark and things like that. A lot of those I, I've spoken about a couple of things I've tried to write. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, 
dark is kind of the way people fear. Yeah. You know, it, it starts when you're a kid. But I, I, I think it's also because we were saying about how it gets romanticised and eventually that dies off. But there are also things like Hotel Transylvania where they just go, let oh, just have let's fun. just have fun with this. What if it's just a big what if? What if <laughs> like Castle Dracula was in fact just a, a hotel, a hotel for uh, supernatural? <laughs> Because why not? Yeah, why not? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, it's, I, I actually really like those films. They're I really need to good. watch them. I really yeah, want to watch they them. Are, they are really but there's funny. no reason why they can't also they can't be romantic and also scary as yes. hell at the same time. Well, they do. Ha- the, those films do have. They can be the you, monster you as well. You know they're funny, but they do the comedy scary. I'm thinking yeah. of, of uh, <laughs> films like Fright Night, where his the vampire in it still manages to be incredibly alluring to the characters in it, while the, while the, while the character is also kind of going, "Hang on, hang on, you you are not what you look, seem. Oh dear. Yeah. Okay, we'll go on a <laughs> killing spree. It's fine." <laughs> Yeah, you you can still do a horror movie where you can romant the vampire can still manage to be romantic, mm-hmm. and also murdering people. Yeah, well, that is. <laughs> There's no reason you can't do both. How else do you think they get hot of blood? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the final question before we move on to the next question. Mm-hmm. Um, next question. Next segment. Um, who would win? Basically, would you? They yeah, have all the films. They've got Dracula, Frankenstein's monster, giant werewolves. I don't know. Do you believe vampires would be the best ones? Or, as in Underworld, they're just going to have an ever-long battle between them and werewolves? Because initially, you don't see why they're sort of against each other. No, it apart from... It doesn't seem like they should be against each other, especially there's when it comes to werewolves. There's going to be a power werewolves. struggle. Yeah, there's going to be a power struggle, but when it comes to like, werewolves and vampires... Why are they struggling? <laughs> well, I've put some thought into this, and I I think it is genuinely vampires. They're strong all the time, but they mm. are only allowed to be strong at night because yeah. they can't function during the day. Werewolves only really get to be strong once a month, mm. but they aren't held back by the by the daylight. So mm. they're different. Which people who are different are going to fight. That's yeah, you know human history is pointing that out. If you're different to me, I'm not going to necessarily like you is a big thing in human history. Certainly not in large numbers. They, they've quite, they start introducing this whole idea that werewolves, werewolves who can tr- transition whenever they like or partly yes. transition. That's and it, starting to annoy me slightly. Yeah, which means that you, you start coming up with more issues. On yeah, because as soon as you've got um, werewolves that can transition at will, yeah. then you've kind of got, okay, well, they're dangerous all the time. Yes. So then we've now got vampires that can uh, wander around in the daylight as much as they like, as long as they've got, say, a charm or something yes. like that. And it's like, you're getting rid of all the boundaries that kept yeah. these guys in the dark. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you you're, you're you're taking away what's made them scary all along. Yes, which is how they're allowed to go to high school and have a high school romances. Yes. But you know, <laughs> <laughs> it's uh... we're drifting onto the sparkly things again. No, I was thinking <laughs> Vampire Diaries actually. Yeah, at I was that thinking particular Vampire point. Diaries as oh, well. Okay. <laughs> yeah, the, uh, they can wander around in the daylight as long as they've got a charm. Oh, is Vampire yeah. Diaries? I haven't watched any of those so That, yeah, that no, reference but... went right over my head. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not talking about the sparkly things because no. they sparkle in the sunlight. Because why? The... Um, yes. How is that even advantageous? I don't know. I, 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 it was briefly mentioned before. I'm not sure we've said. Uh, we have both read all the books and seen all the films. And yeah. well, I've seen all the films. I don't know if you've seen uh, them. I all. saw the first one. Was so appalled I had to stop. I've seen read all the books and I've seen all the films. And my scorn is at least well founded. Yes, at least I, I, I know what I'm talking yeah, about. To be I, I, I've read it. the books, so I feel like I can say what I think. <laughs> yes, we're not just sitting here kind of going, "Why would they sparkle?" Without having read them, yes. she hasn't satisfactorily explained why they sparkle. No. I'm annoyed. Mm-hmm. End of conversation. Like, if, if they're that good looking already, why do they sparkle as well? Yes. <laughs> do they shower in glitter? I don't know. <laughs> no, Are they no. Magnus Bane? I hope not. <laughs> you, you, you can't, you can't imagine not. Dracula in Transylvania in a shower. <laughs> Singing along it's to Katy shy. Perry, can you? It's oh just my God. <laughs> I don't think Castle Dracula has showers. I think it's a bit too ruined for that. Yeah. I don't think it plumbing is that advanced. No. Well, you know, if you they're running a hotel in like in Hotel Transylvania, true, they probably had yeah, plumbers in. Yeah, I, they must do. Get some werewolf plumbers in, I'll be fine. Yeah. Parker's <laughs> well, that, that would be me. awkward if they don't like each other. <laughs> well, I don't know. If you're going with Hotel Transylvania, clearly they're fine. Yeah. <laughs> well, apparently so. Yeah, apparently big bad wolf was best friends. <laughs> there's, no, there's no reason why, you know, 
authors can decide to make them allies or enemies as they see fit or make them switch which i'm doing quite a lot um, <laughs> yeah so you've got all of human history to play with you can you can make them switch <laughs> so moving on onto the transition uh oh before we do move on yeah. uh I think we haven't really addressed the fact of why we like vampires so much in the fact that they embody immortality mm-hmm. as well, which is something else that's incredibly Everyone seductive about them. Everyone always seems there. to want to live forever. They and do. They have. Uh... That's it, it's what a part of what makes them so seductive mm-hmm. and dangerous is the oh, yeah. I get to live forever if I yes. become one of you. So what what do you think with immortality? Um, generates that want to live forever because I can't think of anything worse. Well, yeah, I'm not a particular fan that, that, of the idea, but it's yeah, the but not who, wanting to die either. Yeah. There's people who will say, oh, the worst thing ever would be dying. I want to live forever. Like, well, no, that's not the worst thing ever, but to some people it is. So yes. becoming a vampire. Yeah, we, we've, be grown a up, we've grown up with, you know, Harry Potter, where Dumbledore's basically told yeah. us that to the well organised mind, death is the next great adva- yeah. adventure. So we've Which makes got you the... wonder why Voldemort didn't become a vampire. But... <laughs> <laughs> oh, because he loses his wizard powers, but we're not going to yes. that conversation. <laughs> yeah, <good> um, <laughs> You know, it, they are the seductive. You've got the option. Mm-hmm. You know, you if you're choice. afraid of dying, <laughs> you know, you you've got the option not jo- to. Yeah, you you can avoid death. Well, you can avoid dying, but you yeah. are going to. Have you're to going to see endure. a lot of death. You're going I mean, to see a lot of death avoiding, in avoiding your own death. Yeah. You're just going to watch everybody else die. Well, Technically, like when depending they say which a life myth. for a life and things like that. So if depend- you're not going to die, then you're going to have to kill people to get, stay alive. So, so, some or people don't care about that. Death. Yeah, I know. Some people don't care, but it is that sort of thing, yeah. life for life. So if you were living forever... And depending on what myth you go to, with, you actually have to, to die death. anyway. Yeah. If you're going with, depending on the yeah, land technically you do have to die, but you, you know. <laughs> yeah, you are dead. But you're alive. You're just still walking around. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Technically dead. Yes. Technically, it's also dead is a, a really a... great book series, <laughs> Which, but they have nothing to do with vampires. <laughs> yes. No, I, th- I think the idea of immortals and, and things that can defy death yeah. is another one of those enduring things that's not going to go away about vampires. Mm. It's the power of them and the uh, power. It's the power of you know super strength and whatever else you're going to mm-hmm. give them, but also the avoiding yeah. death and yeah, it's, aging. It's the fact that not only are you immortal? You also are powerful. Yes, you're more powerful than you dreamed you could be. Yeah. Is the seductive so everyone part. Everyone wants to be powerful. Everyone wishes they were stronger, faster. Particularly since the romanticizing of vampires, mm-hmm. they've suddenly become a whole lot more appealing. Yes. Rather than the creepy, smelly, dead things that Dracula yes. is. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> they make. You can't look at yourself in the mirror to. You know, no. No. And they, and they do the make a. Teeth. No. They do make a point of in the novel he smells. Yes. Wherever he smell. he's spending the night he smells because yeah. you know he smells death. Yes. Because he's been you know he's, been dead he's a drink well. he is a dead and be covered in other people's blood. Yeah. Or oh, full of other people's blood. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So he smells. <laughs> they've they've glossed over that in everything since. Yeah. The smell. Yeah, everyone's just, ooh, he's so nice. He's like, no, no, he, he really, uh, he's not. <laughs> he's really no, not. No, he stinks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, 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 they glossed over that very quickly afterwards, but yeah, um, yeah that, that's. I'm past smell if you're believing Dram, Bram Stoker. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah. I'm shrugging in a, in a podcast. Nobody can see me shrug. <laughs> you keep shrugging. I need to know. figure out how to vocalise a shrug. <laughs> Yeah. Shrug. Like, oh, look at that. You did it again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm talking about it now. Okay, so we're now going on to the next section where I'm going to sit this one out because I cannot write vampires for the life of me. Um, <laughs> we're handing over to Natalie and Kirsty, who have written a couple of vampire stories themselves, one being Vlad and the other one being Ashes. So uh, if you'd like to go through your plot synopsis, and then read bits of them for our listeners. Okay, so I think we're starting with Vlad, which is a co-written thing between myself and Kirsty. Yep. Um, we, we thought that since we both like vampires and uh, our writing styles <laughs> combined together would uh, create a decent story. <laughs> so, yes. uh, so basically Vlad is, it's not the Dracula, Vlad is the son of Dracula. Hence the talk about half-vampires earlier. Yes, hence the talk about half-vampires. This is where the inspiration led to. Uh, So, yes, uh, and Vlad also has a sister called Luminita, 
and they live in Transylvania in Castle Dracula and uh, Vlad has a human friend called Stefan who he goes to school with and basically you're gonna give you a taster of you got a section called growing up so this is how uh, Vlad and Luminita grew up in Castle Dracula, and you may note that Vlad did not have the best of growing, <laughs> the best of a childhood. He's not, he's, he doesn't necessarily live up to his name no. as much as he could. No, he doesn't. And then we'll have uh, another section where Luminita visits her brother at school, and we'll find we'll out just how. In a <laughs> yes, <laughs> just how she behaves as a vampire. So uh, mm. I think I hand over to Kirsty to do the growing up section. Yes. Growing up in Castle Dracula was both difficult and frightening. Time showed that the seemingly human babies indeed had vampire cravings. Within a year of their arrival into Dracula's clan, they had tasted their first blood. They grew slower than normal children might, their intellect advancing ahead of their physical growth. Vampiric skills also began to present themselves in the children, more evidently in the second child, the daughter, Luminita, than in Dracula's son, Vlad Dracula II, much to his father's frustration. While the girls seemed to embrace the vampire side of her nature, Vlad appeared to be holding desperately onto his humanity. Dracula's clan of vampires, with the exception of Mina Harker, who acted as the children's sole mother figure but spent large amounts of her time sheltering in the dungeons, were not kind to the half-vampire children, especially the Count's son, Vlad. As the firstborn and the son, Dracula treated Vlad with special courtesy, although he cared for and treated both his children with uncharacteristic kindness. It was with no small amount of shock, however, when Dracula realised that his son, despite all that was against him, was fundamentally nice. For Vlad, growing up in Castle Dracula was particularly hard. The castle, perched high on a narrow outcropping of rock in the Carpathians, was not really the most welcoming environment to grow up in. While his sister seemed to thrive in the darkness and remoteness of the castle, Vlad found the isolation stifling and cold. The castle, half ruined and ancient, was only approachable from one side. Sheer drops surrounded it from the back. To one side there was a great crevasse at the foot of the cliff, an unfathomably deep abyss, dark as a constant night that not even the vampires living in the castle above knew the extent extent of its depth. However, the highly defensible position of the castle, with the rear of it being away from the reach of any potential invaders, allowed the rooms that were south-facing to have large windows that gave the place a, a a level of light not found in most such buildings, and gave it an antiquated but luxurious feel. For Vlad, the castle was even less hospitable, more because of the other residents than the building. To start with, his half-sister was as different from him as could be, and that resulted in Luminita having a less than pleasant disposition that was easily aggravated. There were times when the siblings were on the same wavelength, but their moments of agreement were usually short-lived. There were equal measures of liking and loathing in their relationship. His sister was only the beginning of Vlad's problems, however. The main problem was the clan. Although Dracula left orders behind him to cla- behind him to the clan to care for his children whenever he was away, which was often, they were seldom obeyed. As the son of the Count, Vlad was expected to receive at least a little respect from his father's clan, but they resented what they saw as favouritism. Without his powerful father nearby to protect him, the Count's kindly son was a target for many of the clan's amusements. The clan had fun with him. Cruel and dangerous fun, which regularly resulted in Vlad becoming bruised and battered and having frequent near-death experiences. An example of one such occasion was when Vlad showed himself to be slow at learning to shift his shape. The clan's idea of a suitable way to teach the boy how to transform himself into a bat was to fling him from the highest window of the castle overlooking the unknown dark gorge. Needless to say, their method worked and the clan had a great laugh at his expense. As a result of all this, Vlad spent much of his time attempting to hide from the rest of the clan and trying to be as human as he could. The only vampiric tendency that Vlad liked led to him escaping regularly deep into the mountains and living wild for days at a time, where he would be found by his father when he returned to find his son nowhere in the castle, curled up with and being cared for by the local pack of wolves. Once Vlad and his sister appeared to be around 13 years of age, although they were in fact around two years older than that, their father decided that they were to be sent away to school. Although the Count was well educated and more than capable of giving his children an outstanding education, which he had done until that time, 
and his tuition was exceedingly patchy, as he was often away, and the rest of the clan were far from the best of teachers. This prompted Dracula to come to the decision that school would be the best option for his half-human offspring, as they were evident, evidently efficient at blending in with humans, often wandering down the mountain to go to the closest village. Schools were selected, and, rather to Vlad's relief, they were separate institutions. He was to attend Zenopol Academy for boys, some miles to the north, and his sister was to go to a school for girls around 50 miles further to the northeast of where he would be. Vlad was fairly confident that he could blend in with his school friends, despite having to live in contact, in contact with them in such close proximity that he would have to. He, was, he had always been rather good at sneaking about, although he dearly hoped he wouldn't have to do too much sneaking. He was human enough that his vampire needs would hopefully only require tending to every couple of weeks. And none of the handicaps that hampered full vampires really bothered him all that much. No, as Vlad travelled away from his home, he was not bothered by the prospect of an unfamiliar place with unfamiliar people that he had to keep his dangerous secret from. He was simply looking forward to being able to be as human as he could be. So that is, <laughs> that is our introduction to our characters. <laughs> yes. Well, the next... Oh. So the next bit we have um, about is Luminita. Two and a half years later. Yes, it's about two and a half years later when uh, Luminita visits uh, Stefan and Vlad. Yes, Stefan it, being Vlad's best friend yes. who has figured out what he is and is bizarrely okay yes. with it. Uh, yes, at this point everyone knows pretty much what's going on. <laughs> Stefan has moments of... <laughs> he has moments where he's not quite sure what's going on, but that's just because uh, Vlad and Luminita have a weird way of talking at times. <laughs> of course, none of his other schoolmates know what's going on, so... so um, yeah. Yeah. Stefan is enlightened. Nobody else is. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> well, hello, boys. The velvet voice broke the more or less studious silence in the room as both its inhabitants froze. Vlad was sitting, trying to work through some particularly bothersome equations and glancing over periodically to check that his roommate had not fallen asleep on his Latin notes again. Stefan was lying on his stomach on his bed, feet crossed on the pillows, head propped on one hand while he tried to learn the different tenses which Vlad had been threatening to test him on all evening. Luminita slipped in off the windowsill before her brother recovered enough to push her back out and sauntered over to sit next to Stefan's knees. Vlad watched her warily but made no move to eject her other than putting down his notes. Stefan, on the other hand, pulled himself vertical and out of such proximity to the girl vampire now reclining across his pillows. His much-abused Latin books hit the floor again as he scrambled out of her way. What are you doing here again? Stefan's tone was distinctly hostile. He had forgotten he had not forgotten the fool he had made of himself last time she had shown up. I wanted to see you again, Luminita flashed her most persuasive smile at Stefan, but he continued to glare at her, so she pouted at him briefly and turned her attention to her brother instead. Vlad was impressed with his friend's reaction. It seemed like every time he met Luminita, he got better at dealing with her, which was impressive, as she had quite a flair for manipulating men. Stefan was less impressed with his own reaction. He had managed not to turn immediately into the girl's plaything, but that hadn't stopped him wanting to. He glared at her some more and backed up a little further from her, just in case she decided to look at him again. Vlad glared at his sister in exasperation. Don't you have your own school you are supposed to be at rather than coming to bother me here? I have another message from father for you, brother. Luminita got to business as far as she ever did and examined her fingernails, painted a shocking shade of dark red as she expanded. He would like you to come home and join the clan again this weekend. He wants you back by dusk tomorrow. She smiled wickedly at the two of them as she got fluidly to her feet. I go to the girls, go to a girls' school, brother. It's hard to find people so easy to man manipulate there. Her hand was on the door handle before Vlad realised what she was intending and was on his feet in an instant. You cannot hunt here, he hissed, his hand firmly on the door to stop her opening it. A second later, there was a loud crack and he was several steps back into the room, holding his wrist and growling quietly. It had happened too fast for Stefan to see, but Vlad's wrist looked broken. Calm down, brother, I'm not going to eat anyone. And with that, she had the door open and was striding out into the corridor. Identical expressions of horror graced both boys' faces as they looked at each other, and then they both scrambled for the doorway as they heard the first whistle from a few rooms down. Luminita! Vlad hissed frantically, half out the doorway, hiding his broken wrist behind his back. The only reaction he got from her was a flick of her hair in his direction as heads started appearing from rooms all along the corridor. 
A few crude comments followed the whistles, and Vlad was torn for a moment before he shouted down the corridor, Hey, guys, that's my sister! Back off! Several of the boys who had been emerging from their rooms ducked guiltily back inside, but a few continued to follow Luminita, who had turned and smiled encouragingly at them. Vlad groaned and closed the door between them and the mess outside. Is it really safe to leave her out there? Stefan asked cautiously, as Vlad sank down onto his bed, clutching his wrist. I doubt she's really stupid enough to actually eat anyone. Hopefully she is just after the attention and they will all be too afraid of me to get up too much with my sister. Vlad winced as he set his wrist so it wouldn't heal out of line. Besides, there would be even more questions if I went out there with this, and it's not like I can throw her out of a window now everyone's watching her, is it? Stefan sighed and sat down too. True. How long will that take to heal? It should be perfect by tomorrow. He rolled his eyes at the sound of his sister's laugh from the other side of the door. One day, I'm going to sneak into her school and embarrass her like that. You can do that? Stefan was surprised for a moment, but then his memory caught up with him as Vlad raised his eyebrows at him, and he recalled all the times that they had been in the village and girls had followed Vlad around, asking him stupid questions just to hear him speak. Most vampires can, but Luminita's particularly good at compulsion. I try not to use it, but that doesn't always stop it working. Right. Stefan managed not to laugh since Vlad was trying very hard not to move his arm. Instead, he collected his Latin books from the floor where they seemed to spend so much time. As he sat back down, the rest of the conversation with Luminita came back to him. So, what are you being called home for again? You hardly ever get called home like that, and that's the second time this month. Vlad was very slow in answering. Things are happening now. The clan is involved. We are working to help. It's complicated. And your father wants you to be a part of the clan? But you hate the clan. Of course he does. I'm his son. What do you want? Vlad stared at the ceiling for a moment for, from where he was lying on his back trying not to move and offset his wrist. It's my father's clan and I'm his firstborn. Was all Stefan got out of his friend for the rest of the evening. <laughs> so those are two snippets. <laughs> and they, trust me, are snippets. <laughs> Yeah, I yeah. can see down the side of the computer there, there's uh, several other chapters and... But those aren't even chapters, those are scenes. Well, those are <laughs> but we're not even done, we're it's not like, done yet. Yeah, but we're about halfway through. <laughs> it's quite lengthy. And how, how many years have we been work, working on this now? I think the first the first uh, thing on the Google Drive was dated uh, 2012, so... Yeah. It's yeah. been going for a while. I think it's been going for a bit longer than that. Yes. In ideas but yes oh and i yeah i wanted to say yeah that's the reason i want to find out is how long we've been doing it is because the whole thing with uh like getting thrown out the window and turning into a bat we did not steal that from hotel transylvania <laughs> we, no. we came up with that many years ago <laughs> that, that, pre-exi- that pre-existed before hotel transylvania too. yes <laughs> <laughs> we got there first <laughs> and they were watching the trailer and it happened and kind of went, hey! Oi, that's ours. <laughs> <laughs> yes it's like oh uh, yeah uh, so I suppose the second one is uh, a story that I've been writing by myself. Um, it's not precisely about vampires in the fact that the main characters aren't all vampires. There are. I've effectively managed to write some immortal characters that I can't kill mm-hmm. uh, at all, which is an interesting challenge to give yourself, um, that you can't kill your bad guys. <laughs> it's like, excellent. Uh, but there are vampires, there are werewolves. Supernatural stuff is happening a lot. This is a very, very short snippet that I've written um, about one character who starts off the book human. And at this point, he's getting used to the fact that he's been turned into a vampire. Briefly. The rain was only getting heavier. Chris felt it might be too much to hope that the downpour would deter the hunters from their nightly sweep of the city. Their job was to keep the hunters at, at busy. Make them think they were still in London, tearing up the town not grouped hundreds of miles away about to spring a trap on their home base. Everything depended on keeping them looking the other way, keeping their attention here. Which was why Chris and several of the other nocturnals were all out in the in the rain, waiting to pick a fight with people whose express purpose was to kill them. This was not exactly what he had planned. He should have been back at uni by now. Of course now, he would never be going back. Impatiently, Chris shook his head to clear it flicking water out of his eyes in the same motion. What's done was done, and there was no use brooding over it. 
especially not when hunters would be bearing down on them at any time. Chris kind of wished they would hurry up. He was by now soaked to the skin, not that he was really bothered that were really bothering him all that much now since vampires weren't really affected by the cold, but still wet clothes were uncomfortable. At that point, there was a sharp whistle, at a pitch too high for human ears, but all that but that all the hidden nocturnals could hear. There were some things that were definitely cool about being a vampire, Chris had to admit. He really liked all his new senses. As announced by the signal, the hunters entered the street. There were four of them, all in black, striding purposefully down the road, seemingly oblivious to the danger above their heads. They reached the point below the, below the scaffolding without ever looking up. Chris rolled his eyes. He would have thought they would have been better trained than that. Another whistle, and as one of the vampires around him, and as one with the vampires around him, Chris jumped, reveling his reveling in his new ability to leap safely from the third floor, and to land on the hunters. They barely had time to know what the, what had hit them. The hunters crumpled, and had no time to react before they were pinned. Chris had no qualms whatsoever about sinking his teeth into people who would kill him, given the chance particularly since it wouldn't actually harm them. Chris found he was actually quite enjoying himself. <laughs> See, mine was actually a snippet. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> actually a snippet. <laughs> Tiny segment of the scene. Okay, so now we're on to our main segments. First of all, we're going to go over to Natalie for the picture of We've Been Googling. What's your story, Nat? Uh, horror 1,000 pound dolls with devil eyes and blood seeping from mouths. Okay. Yes. Excellent. It's completely creepy. Really creepy. <laughs> okay. Creepier so... than the China dolls that you yes. were given as a yes. child. Yes, creepy. Creepy. Because I've got to get a collection of those. Yes, even creepy. Shut away in a cupboard. Really? <laughs> Don't. No. <laughs> okay, I'll show you the pictures in a moment. <laughs> so, uh, I'll just read out. Spine chilling figures described as reborn babies have devil like eyes. One has been branded a zombie top, while others have blood and saliva seeping from the sides of their mouths. Many furious parents have blasted Etsy's twisted beanstalk nursery range, fearing it would scar their children for life. Then why buy it? <laughs> <laughs> would somebody think of the children? <laughs> and, and, and even if the dolls don't scare mums and dads, the price might. The cheapest from the online company is £158.78. Jesus! Well, the dearest mm. will set you back £1,264. Awesome, I'm going to start making it. <laughs> the firm making the characters said they will grow on their twisted little vines straight from my heart to yours. <laughs> but one mum said, who would buy dolls to give their kids when they look like they're part of an X-rated horror movie? There was nothing remotely cute or cuddly about them. <laughs> Although that one <laughs> have they seen the China dolls that people used to buy me? Because what else uh, do you buy a small you, girl? You have to be a sadist or have a warped sense of humour to give one of these to your children. Excellent. Uh, have a second. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, apparently artist Bean Shanin spent up to eight hours a day bringing to life her zombie babies. Sure, um, I'll do that job. Yeah, and I'll just uh, show, you, show you the pictures now. Which are kind of uh, Eight hours a day? Yes. I can see why they charge like a hundred odd quid. So, oh my god! Why are, is that one on the right? Nice. Those are quite nice. <laughs> I like that one. Uh, that is got... horrible. Vampire! <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. It just looks it's like a, vamp- a glam it looks rock like, one. It looks like an actual baby that... Yeah. Has, has, had been, has been painted. Yeah. To, that's fantastic. Unless that is an actual baby. She's selling <laughs> children <laughs> online. That oh, one, that's actually no. kind of cute. I quite like that that's one. Cute. You cannot like, find that cute. Yeah, that is it, horrifying. It's like a baby dressed up as a really flashy it's clown. It's dressed up like it. It's a clown. Precisely. That is bad. It's, it's so a cute. like it's a it's a very pink kind of yeah. adorable clown yeah. with some cool face oh, paint. Yeah, garden. sure, sure. That's adorable if you're into. You know, say no masochistic yeah, but this murder. Yeah, normal eyes. Yeah, well, the, the, the eyes have are psychotic better. Psychotic eyes. I mean, that one has red eyes. <laughs> yeah, uh, some of the ordinary-looking China dolls are creepier than that. Yeah. People Just... used to buy me China dolls, and they're I mean, so the, the, creepy. The, the, some of them are beautiful. Are... Some no. of them are creepy. Stare at these ones long enough. The ones with the black eyes, and you start getting creeped out slowly. They start. I'm kind of getting creeped out already. Yeah. 
The more you look at them, the more you're like, ah. they look like demons from Supernatural yeah, or things do. that are all dead. They, they generally look. The one on the left genuinely looks dead. Mm-hmm. Wow. Well. Yes. Anyway, <laughs> which makes the one with the pink hair and the clown hat look actually kind of adorable. Yes, it does. <laughs> No. And now look yes. at this one. Ah, oh, look at it. It actually looks happy though. It does. It's got like a smiley face. Oh. You two are wrong in every <laughs> Okay, no, so now we go back to Bram Stoker's Dracula for inspiration for our five minute faff. First word is. What's well, the only word we're using? <laughs> Res- <laughs> reservations. Reservations. So, starting now with reservations. Have you ever tried to like book a room on Travelodge? It is far more difficult than it should be. I think I have. It, it, I think I have. Oh, they're just, they're just, it's Maybe a horrible it website. <laughs> Do it wrong. It's not that bad of a website. <laughs> it, it really is. You like, put the information in, it gives you a room. Yeah. <laughs> right. All right. Maybe they just like you. Maybe they just hate me. Maybe that's it. Yeah, clearly. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, that real friendship, <laughs> right in the heart. I'm feeling the love. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm having reservations about this topic. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a great start, is it? No, I, I was going to go into say so you know you're going to somewhere. You know, if you've got to make a reservation for dinner or a table for drinks or something, you know you're going somewhere pretty good. I, 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 I went to somewhere and had to have a reservation last weekend, and that was you know. Was it Browns by any chance? No. Your no. fancy cocktail bar. It was a very fancy cocktail bar. Uh, and I don't it think I've was... ever been to a cocktail bar. <laughs> I have several times. Not one that fancy before, because the drinks were setting you back sort of nine quid at least. <laughs> and, uh, oh, they were worth it. <laughs> they were worth it. <laughs> Unless they're in two litre jugs, they're yes, not worth no. nine quid. Oh, they are. <laughs> it's sort of like heaven you, on earth. And the, have... pers- the person in charge of the jukebox at that bar at one point went completely supernatural. Literally, carry on my way- wayward son was ca- followed by heat of the moment. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just like, me and Rachel sat there going, it's, 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 it's that, that sort of money though on a pangalactic gargle blaster. <laughs> <laughs> they could probably have made you one. It's that kind of bar. <laughs> It's that kind of bar where they probably have the necessary uh, medical equipment to revive me afterwards. Possibly not, so you might not want to actually order it. (laughs) It's 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 set up to look a bit like a speakeasy, so it's it's quite it's awesome. Yeah, there's quite a lot of taxidermy in the room I was sat in, including a squirrel like running off with a banknote with a little sign at the bottom saying "Gone gone look for nuts." It was it was a bit weird, but it was awesome. Um, (laughs) Bristol does have some very strange places. This is like, the kind of you can this stay, is the... well not stay but you can visit. Like we go to one place called Atomic Burger, and it's just like paraphernalia of all like nineties toys everywhere. Like yeah, and no, it's, it's all mixed up and it weirds me out. Like Batman is sat in the Ghostbusters car, and then what? you've got a TARDIS uh, that's got an alien popping out of it, and all the <laughs> wallpaper is like comic book stuff. It, it's, it's really cool, but. We don't have anything like that in our hometown. Our hometown is too small for us to have anything yeah. like that. Yeah, but we got rid of the cinema years ago, and yeah. we never got it back. I, I know. It's every... now a Weatherspoon. Yeah, and everyone <laughs> celebrates the fact that we've got a Domino's and a Costa. Yeah. Um, anyway, yeah. yeah, I am quite excited about that. <laughs> the, co- I mean, the Costa, particularly, I'm like, there's actually a franchise coffee shop. I could go sit somewhere and be anonymous as you can in this town. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you say that, and then someone will come up to the window and go. Hi! Oh God! <laughs> not, not for me. I'm very good at being invisible, and I don't know that. No, no, no. That fine. would be me. Yeah, for you. I'm not going to sit there with no, you. No, no, no. I mean, I'll be the one at the window. Oh, you're. Going, Hi! <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not going to be knocking gently on the window. You're going to be pressed against the window, like <laughs> palms on it, going, "Hello!" I like what you've done with this place. <laughs> you're going to be the one who like splatters yourself yeah. against the window. <laughs> Yeah. I have too many lunatics for friends because I know I have more than one friend oh, who would thanks. do that. No, no I'm, think, I'm thinking of Rachel, I'm thinking of Rachel Stevenson would also probably do that as well. Because <laughs> like, I know far too many people who would do that to me. That's why oh, you, can, you can never tell your friends where you're going, really, because the worry is if they live nearby, there is that potential for them to come yeah. and muck about. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I've done that. My friend's been sat in a bank in Taunton and she was facing the window. So naturally, I was doing various things past the window, like rowing a boat <laughs> <laughs> and hopping about like a kangaroo and waving as I lowered myself into a lift. 
and she was struggling not to laugh. <laughs> Naturally, that I continued until I, I got it. told off by my fiance. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> like, maybe you should stop that. <laughs> yeah. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> Nothing here. <laughs> oh, How long did that? You managed to make that go on for? A couple of minutes. That's still fairly <laughs> really impressive. impressive. Yeah. Um, it was only because she was drawing money out of the wall. <laughs> she, that's I was like, we're leaving now. What Come I on. was doing. <laughs> that was fun. I imagine that was quite fun. Oh. This is why I take myself on holiday alone. <laughs> For peace and quiet. <laughs> I go away on holiday to relax. I don't know whether relax. we should be on holiday. <laughs> I'm sorry. You're hearing the fallout of the mini pops. <laughs> yeah, this is it. This is the end. The breakup's happening. Sorry, don't apologize. Oh, oh look at that. That's how it well. <laughs> I don't even think we need to count how many times we went off there. <laughs> it's not going to be a record. I think we don't need to count. I think we should uh, count. Because oh, we go on then. <laughs> right, after the official count for our five minute bath, that was 22, which was not as bad as we thought it was. Well, you know. And we still I appear to be surprised. speaking to each other. Yes. So. Yeah. <laughs> and we went from. Uh, reservations, reservations to, to the breakup of a friendship. So. <laughs> <laughs> Even if it was very, very short lived, hopefully. I still hate you. And deliberately um. misinterpreting. <laughs> interpreting me. <laughs> deliberately misinterpreting. Uh. So. Okay, so now, of course, it is time for our pod challenge. Uh, I can't remember what the score is. I think it's 3 2 1, isn't it? Or something? You should keep a score for this. Yeah. <laughs> you should have been. We'll go back and check. Yeah. Uh, we'll go back and check. Either well, way, I've been, doing, assume, I've been doing quite well. I think I'm out of this. Uh, winning. Um, <laughs> <laughs> if you can call it that. <laughs> yeah, if you can call it that. Um, I think I'm second. I've like, been doing quite well training. out of this, frankly. Can yes, you have. She gets the uh, rotten egg one that I put in there. Which is the worst it, the worst bean possible. No, I do believe that was the first one that I ever had. Yay! Yay! <laughs> Which was the and one that was coated in sugar beforehand, and then the I realised. Coated in sugar. Yeah, <laughs> and this, this was the one that uh, made us implement the swallowing rule. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You must swallow. After I yeah. ran out of the room and spat it in the nearest bin. You must swallow. Yes. <laughs> Take it. <laughs> okay. I'm holding okay. them out. So it's there is pick. a. I'm not going to remember what they are now. I think it was a marshmallow. Uh, They're not, earwax. Yeah. And... See, I don't remember what earwax is like. So no, that they, they could, could be potentially bad too. be too. Yeah, yeah. they could be too Marshmallow, very... earwax, and rotten egg. Rotten egg. <laughs> Oh god, I haven't got a drink. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to go get a drink? No, it's too late. You've made your, mis- you've made your mistake. Okay, are we ready? Yeah, three, two, two one. one. I've got marshmallow. I think I've got earwax. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to say, earwax is not particularly great. <laughs> you can tell that in your face. <laughs> Liam's being very calm. <laughs> You're gonna have to bleep this next bit. Okay. Earwax is not good. You guys. <laughs> Earwax is fairly gross, actually. <laughs> I didn't know what it would be. Cassie's <laughs> face. Weirdly, I mean, that's a double whammy. <laughs> that is not. I can see why Dumbledore was not happy with the, the earwax so one happy. that he got. <laughs> I'm just saving my marshmallow one. That is horrible. <laughs> <laughs> you kept that it was together not very well. Nice. <laughs> I can't keep it together with rotten egg. That was not nice. <laughs> it's just, stuck in my teeth. I just impressed yeah, the Yeah, that, 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 that's the problem I have at the moment. It's currently stuck between oh, my dear, teeth. Oh yeah, I have marshmallow on my teeth. Oh. <laughs> A you curse on it. you. You deserve it, Kirsty. You haven't had enough. Yes. <laughs> that was weird flavour. I'm not sure I've actually had an earwax one before. Uh, that is yeah. weird. Ah, brilliant. So that's like 4 2 2, I think. Excellent. That is exactly the score that I want. Uh, <laughs> uh, that's, that's two rotten eggs. Yeah. You know, my luck is Can you even atrocious. speak anymore? <laughs> Alas, earwax. Uh, Moving on. Yes. <laughs> Moving on. Um, so that is it for today. Yeah. Um, please like. <laughs> <laughs> Kirsty still. Well, if, if you're enjoying the fact that Kirsty is currently, you know, gagging Finally. after swallowing, um, 
then please, the chewing like, was the problem. Yeah, <laughs> like, share, and subscribe. Um, uh, I've been Liam. I'm Natalie. I'm Kirsty. And we'll see you next time. <laughs> Bye. 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 <laughs>